Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. We are seeing about cursor related interview questions as a continuation of that. In this video, we will see about what are all the cursor attribute. See in the previous two videos, we have seen about what is a cursor and what are all the types of cursor. And in the next video, we have seen about explicit cursor, how to uh, uh, define a cursor and how to open, fetch and uh, access the values from the cursor and how to close the cursor. So in this video, we'll see about what, are, what is a cursor attribute and how to use the cursor attribute. So cursor attributes are nothing but the uh, way by which we can get the information and the runtime information about the cursor. So Oracle provided like four cursors, uh, sorry, four cursor attributes. One is called is open, found, not found, row count. We can use these four attributes to get the information about the cursor and its execution. For example, the is open cursor uh, will return true if the cursor is open, otherwise it will return false. See the way we have to use this is open cursor is, suppose if you are writing a very uh, huge PL SQL code, at some point of time you want to open it, but you are not sure whether the cursor is already opened or not. So at that time you can check this attribute to know whether that particular cursor is already opened or not. If if not open, then you can open it. So to, to check the uh, information about a cursor or to check whether the cursor is open, you can use this particular attribute. The next two attribute found and not found will give information about the fetch uh, status. For example, the found will keep returning true as far as the cursor is able to fetch the information. The moment it reaches the end of record and if the last fetch is failed, then the found attribute will return false. Same way, the not found will keep returning false as far as it is able to fetch. The moment it's not able to fetch, that is the moment the last fetch is unsuccessful, then the not found will return true. See, basically these two attributes, we can use it to know whether the uh, cursor fetch has reached the end of data or not. See, this, this is very much essential because typically we'll write a loop to fetch the information. So every time after a fetch, you can check these two attributes to know whether you have actually reached the end or not so that you can come out of the loop. The next attribute is like row count attribute. The row count attribute will return the number of fetches successfully completed. So using that we can know how many times the uh, fetch operation has returned the value. So these are the four attribute and these are the four key uh, description about the attribute. See, so this is more than enough from interview point of view. However, from working point, you need to know little bit more. I will explain you in detail about these four attributes with a lot of examples later. Okay. Um, so the first thing uh, you need to keep it in mind is that not all the attributes can be given in all the places within a PL SQL block because few of these attributes will throw an exception uh, before opening the cursor and after opening the cursor. So few of the attributes are applicable only from open to close, but few cursors you can use, you can use even before open and after close that we'll see with uh, in detail now. So the first attribute what we saw is is open. So the is open cursor you can use anywhere within the PLC SQL code. So it just return true or false. It won't throw any exception at all. If the cursor is open, it just returns true. Otherwise it just returns false. The next attribute is like found and not found. So the found attribute and the not found attribute, if you try to use it before opening the cursor or after closing the cursor, it will throw an exception called invalid cursor. So these two attributes you have to use only within the opening line till the closing line. And these two are basically will return true or false depends on the fetch operation. For example, if the last fetch is successful, found will return true. Same way if the last fetch is unsuccessful, not found will return true. So basically these two attributes, we can use it to know whether the cursor has uh, reached the end of a pointer or not. The next one is like row count uh, attribute. 
the row count attribute uh, you should not use before opening the cursor because if you try to use before opening the cursor there is no memory location allocated and in fact there is no fetch operation also performed so oracle will not be in a position to know how many records is fetched so only after opening a cursor you will be able to use that so in fact after opening a cursor before fetch operation if you try to use this it will return zero but from fetch operation for every successful fetch it just keep incrementing the pointer so it will just keep returning the number of successful fetch operation okay so this is about the uh, cursor information now let us see few examples before uh, going through the example let me just give you one more very important point all these four cursors are in fact applicable for both explicit cursor and implicit cursor but one key difference is since explicit cursors are defined and managed by a developer you will be able to use all these four cursors whereas since implicit cursors are automatically opened executed and closed by oracle we will not be able to use the found and not found attribute so these two things are not applicable for implicit cursor because implicit cursor automatically opened by oracle get executed and it just closes it and it closes and releases the memory so there is even when we go and check it it will be always false because the cursor location is already closed in case of implicit cursor so to access this information from explicit cursor the syntax is we need to use like cursor name percentage the attribute name uh, in fact the is open found and not found will return a boolean information whereas row count will return like a numeric uh, value it will just return a number the same way how we are using for explicit cursor for implicit cursors also we can use the cursor attribute but the name of the implicit cursor is sql so whenever you want to access the attribute information for implicit sql you have to use sql percentage at uh, attribute name so this is how we need to use the uh, attribute to access the information from implicit cursor now let us see few examples to understand all these attributes first let us start with uh, explicit cursor so here is a simple uh, uh, anonymous block i have written where i have just opened a cursor which is just going to fetch the information a list of employee names from employee table and here i am just opening the cursor i am just looping through the cursor to to fetch the name into a scalar variable and you can see here i am just exiting out the moment it is not found that is the moment it reaches the end of line after that i am just printing the name finally i am just closing first let me just execute and show you as you can see now the uh, block got executed and it is just successfully printed all this informations now we'll start understanding each and every acad, um, cursor attribute first we'll start with is open as you can see the way you have to use this is uh, cursor name percentage is open so this will return a boolean information so just before the is open i'm just trying to print so let me just execute it let me just comment out the name for time being okay now let me execute so if you see here it is saying cursor is closed because we are just trying to get the information before the open so let me just now put it after the open part now let me just re execute the code now if you see it is saying cursor is opened because after opening we are checking the is open attribute same way let us try to move this piece of code after closing the cursor so let me again re execute it now if you see the cursor is closed okay so this is just to understand how to use this cursor but the um, actual usage is whenever we are trying to open this cursor okay let me just remove all this code and let me just keep only the open and close okay so now if you see we just have only the open and close now it just got successfully completed now suppose if you are trying to open one more time you can in see here at line number 9 if you open the cursor again at line number 10 we are trying to reopen the same cursor at this point you will get an error saying that cursor already open because the cursor is already open and you are trying to reopen the same cursor again to avoid this we can use this particular uh, attribute for example you can say if 
percentage is open that means if if it is not open then you try to open it okay so this is the actual usage fine now let me just execute this now if you see the program got successfully executed because this particular line will not get executed now because this attribute will say that the cursor is already open so we don't have to reopen this cursor again same way for closing also when you are trying to close the cursor which is already closed you will get an error saying that it is an invalid cursor same way we can check whether the cursor is open only if it is open we can close it okay so let me just put it here now if you see we already closed at line number 14 and at line number 16 we are trying to close it again but we are checking whether the cursor is open or not. Only if it is open, then we are closing it. Now, let me just re-execute it. See, now the program got successfully executed. So this is the real-time usage of the is open attribute. Okay, now we'll see the uh, usage of found and not found, which you already know, because the found and not found typically will be using to check whether it reaches the or reached the end of execution or whether it is a last fetch operation so that we can exit out of the loop. This is how we will be using the found as well as not found. So you, you can use either found or not found. Now let us see an example for a row count. Okay, so row count will return a number. So I just put it in a, a DBMS output here. So this will basically return you the a number of successful fetch. But if you're trying to use it before open uh, the cursor, it will throw you an exception. Let me show you here because here I've just used the row count before opening the cursor. So let me just execute it. As you can see here, it is an invalid cursor because the cursor is not even opened yet. We are, but we are trying to access the information about the row count. Now let me move this row count after open. See here, I've just opened it, but I have not did any fetch operation. So now let me execute this. Now let me just execute it. Now if you see, it will just return zero because uh, the it's it's opened but we have not fetched anything even before fetch operation we are just trying to print the row count okay let me just put row count yeah fine so let me move this row count or let me just move print the row count along with the v name so that we'll know in which particular row number or in which particular fetch operation this particular name is getting printed now if you see along with name we are just printing so this just keeps giving how the number of successful fetch operation okay so this is how we'll be using the row count fine so this is uh, about the explicit cursors now let us see few examples for implicit cursor Now let me show you the uh, how to access the uh, cursor attributes for implicit cursor. Okay, as I already mentioned, uh, not only for explicit cursor these attributes are applicable, even for implicit cursors these attributes are applicable. But to get the uh, uh, implicit cursor information, we need to use the cursor name as SQL. Okay, for explicit cursor you need to use cursor name percentage attribute name. Whereas for implicit cursor, you need to use the SQL because SQL is the name of the implicit cursor. See, now if you see, I'm just trying to do an update operation. The implicit cursor will return the number of rows affected by the previous DML operation. So in this case, the cursor is automatically opened, executed and closed. After close, the only thing uh, uh, we can able to get is either the cursor is open or not, otherwise the row count. So these two attributes, we can use it for uh, implicit cursor let me just execute this so so let me execute this block as you can see here it is now printing the number of rows updated equal to 11 that means 11 record got updated okay may, you may ask like in what scenario you will be using this particular uh, uh, attribute along with uh, implicit cursor see few places will be using this information to return 
to the calling place saying that how many number of rows affected or in few places we will be using to log this information because nowhere we will know how many number of rows affected by the previous SQL statement. This is one such way by which you will be able to identify how many number of affected so that you can use it for logging so that in a debugging uh, mode or when you when you want to debug the thing or you, when, when you want to enable the, like info level logs these informations you can be able to track so that it is easy for debugging. Okay, so this information I've just showed you an update example. Let me just show you one more example. So in this case, I'm just do I'm trying to do a delete. Let me just roll back it here. Yeah, in this case, I'm trying to do a delete. Let me just execute so that we'll get to know how many number of rows actually deleted. One second. Okay, um, I think I have committed here. So let me just use some other table. Let me just use it T. Yeah, now if you see, it is saying it's deleted 16 record. Okay, so this is how we'll be using the um, cursor attribute along with implicit cursor. So let me just show you one more example. So in this example, I'm just using a merge statement. So if, if at all we want to know how many number of records merged by the above merge statement, we can again use the same uh, implicit cursor attribute let me just execute this so if you see here the number of rows merged is one because i've just used only one information about the employee here fine so this is about how we can use the cursor attribute with implicit cursor okay let me ask you one question now uh, can we use is open attribute with implicit cursor yes the answer is yes because we can use the is open and row count with the implicit cursor but the is open will return false because the implicit cursor is opened executed and automatically closed by oracle this is open will always return false in case of implicit cursor let me just show you that with an example now if you see uh, here is the statement a simple delete statement so this delete is trying to delete the employees of department 10 Otherwise, let me just put a T. Yeah. So this will just delete the entire information from the table T. After that, if you are checking whether the particular cursor is open or not, in this case, though the query code will get executed. Okay, let me just set server output on. Now, if you see, this will print the cur implicit cursor is closed because after executing the delete statement, Oracle automatically closes the cursor. That's why this SQL percentage is open will return false. So that's why it is printing implicit cursor is closed. So these are the uh, questions about uh, cursor attributes. Probably in subsequent videos, we'll see few more questions related to cursors like parameterized cursor, ref cursor, and the classes that we use with the uh, cursor and cursor versus collection and named versus named cursor versus ref cursor. If you have learned something new, please like this video. Subscribe and stay tuned for new feature videos, interview question, SQL practical question, concept videos. If you want any questions to be answered, you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail ID. Thanks a lot for watching this video.